What is up everybody, this is Always back with the next video on Java JDBC tutorial series. I've done about 7 videos on JDBC, so this is going to be the last video or maybe a second last video for that tutorial series. So we've been learning how to read data, how to modify data from database using MySQL and Java. So in this video I'm going to show you how to add data to databases. But before we jump into our tutorial, I just want to show you a demo application, what I've been building. So I'm just going to run this application. This is a school system I've been working on. And uh, you can let me know in the comments below that if you want to know how to build this application, I will sh do a separate tutorial. It has been built uh, on JavaFX using uh, MVC Patron and MySQL database. So here, first we label, we can see that we are connected to database and then I'm going to type here username and then the password. And then if I go to select, and then I have two options, student or admin. So I haven't finished the student part yet, but I did a little bit of work on admin so let's just uh, click on login and I will see this window now so here I have this table where I can see the data from the database from the students I have a uh, two tabs here one is empty because I'm still working on this application and in the student tab I have student here and then I can add the details as well so if I want to see whatever the data I have in the database I'll just click on load data and I got this information back. Let's just quickly add ID. We can say 32tom at gmail.com and we can just pick a date of birth for him. That's fine. And then I'm gonna click on add student. And then if I click on load data, as you can see, it's pretty fast. So I got the Michael back. I'll do a separate video on this uh, full application once it's ready because I'm going to be adding a search feature and a lot more option to this uh, application. This is going to be a full on school system. Now we're going to look at how to write data to a database. For that, I'm just going to close this application and we're going to open our previous project I've been using to make this tutorial series. Alright guys, so we have this project open, JDBC tutorial. I've got three classes in that. I've shown you how to connect to database by using a separate class. So we have a dbutil class where we get the connection and we have JDBC tutorial class which has a main method. So in the main method I've got a connection and I am inquiring the database whatever the data I have in the database. Let's just run the application first. And as you can see that the result we're getting is whatever the database we have. Let me just show you. Go to the Chrome and I'll show you. All right, so these are the entries we have in the database. Okay, let's go back to NetBeans now. I have created a new class, add student. So this class is going to help us to add student to the database. I'm actually uh, going to create a method here. So method's going to be public void it's not gonna do anything and we can say uh, add okay so in that we need few things we need id f name string l name string email string dob all right so we have this method in this class let me just go back to database in this table we have a uh, id column f name column l name email gb so that's what entries we made uh, let's just go back to netbeans now okay so here in that i'm going to first of all use a try and catch block okay so i'm going to use the add with resources so i can add the connection like that it's uh, if you're using Java 8 that's uh, supported so we can say connection con is equal to DB util dot get connection we got the connection from there I've got to import that SQL class and then I'm going to use a prepaid statement class is equal to con dot prepare statement 
okay so we need to import that prepaid statement class now we got connection we got this uh, prepaid statement so the first thing what we need to do is we need to create our sql query so type string type sql is equal to insert into and we're going to use our table name which is students okay so i've added that query here so we got insert into the name of our table and then we got our column name f name l name all the column names and then we type values and then you have to add a placeholders just kind of forgot to add a semicolon here we need to add a placeholder so we have a five columns so we type five question marks okay so one two three four five all right so now let's just come here so we have created a connection we got the prepaid statement we got stmt object now let's use that stmt object dot set string okay and now it's got two parameters first the placeholder number which is going to be one for id and here we're going to type id as our string here so we pass in in our method parameters okay so that's fine and then stmt dot set string two and then number two is f name let's just come down set string and then three that's l name all right and then we can type stmt dot set string for that's email stmt dot set string five that's dob okay now we can simply say stmt dot execute okay so our this class is done now so we can call i'm just gonna create an empty constructor i'm just gonna come back to it okay so Let's just add empty constructor here. Okay, so now let's go to our main method. In the main method, we are displaying our data, whatever the data we have in a database. So after this uh, catch, I'm gonna stay in the main method. And here I'm going to create a scanner object first. Scanner, and we can say input is equal to new scanner and then here I'm going to type system dot in okay so we got that all right so I added a scanner object and then I print out on the console saying do you want to add a student okay and then I ask for an answer using that scanner object all right so the variable answer will get the answer from there now I could make it more robust uh, but for simply simply a demonstration I use the condition statement here so I said if answer whatever the answer we get from our scanner object from the input so we can check that answer dot equal ignore case to yes if I type yes and then it will run this code now so here we have five variables such as we print out for uh, enter ID enter first name enter last name and enter email and enter date of birth and then after each printout we got the variable which takes the value from console and now after once we get all the values what I can do I am actually going to make an object from add student classes type add student and let's just name it create is equal to new add student class okay now after that I can use that create object and I call that add method from there so that add method needs five parameters or object five variables so we can set that ID to this ID, F name to this F name, last name to last name, 
email to email and data bar to data bar. Okay, so after we got all the values and we put it into this method which will process the data for us and it is going to as execute the query in this method. Okay, so finally I'm just going to run this. Uh, I actually added a few more entries to test it out. So let's just run the application. Alright, so we got do you want to add students? And if I type yes, and it's gonna ask me enter ID. So I can just say 60, or maybe let's just say 10, and then I press enter, and then let's just type the name. So the name I'm going to type my brother's name, so Aspen, first name, last name, Mirza, email Aspen at gmail.com don't try to email him on this email because this is a fake and data birth let's just say 10 slash maybe use the dash 10 dash 2020 okay he hasn't born yet so I press enter again and then build successful now I'm going to run the application again which will read the data from the database and I will see if the Aspen is been added. All right, so as you can see that Aspen is been added. We can check that in database as well. I actually opened my YouTube channel in a second. Okay, so here I don't see any Aspen in the table. I'll just refresh it, and there you go. So we got ID ten, Aspen first name, Mirza last name, email address, and date of birth. So our application a program is working. So this is how simply you can add data to database. I'll do a separate video or maybe a next video. I'll show you how to add images into databases, actually links of that images using a binary uh, a database data type and then add that image table here so we can uh, reference that to database and then link back to the images. Uh, folder. Alright, so this is a very simple tutorial. I've done pretty much, uh, I've shown you in database how to read data, how to loop through data, how to modify data, and how to add data to database. So this is kind of last video, but I'll do a separate video. There's a few tricks uh, still left to show you guys. So stay tuned for that guys. Any question, let me know in the comments below. And you can follow me on Twitter at OaceMirza01 at uh, on the Twitter, Facebook the same ID as well. Links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Chase.